This is a demonstration of flying a 747-400 in Idupilot using the X-Plane 10 Sittle back end. So what I have here is a 747-400 in X-Plane. We can uh, look around a little bit, so look at it from behind, look inside the cockpit, etc. And uh, so what we're going to be doing is flying this using Idupilot Sittle. Now Idupilot Sittle is the software in the loop simulator. It allows Arduipilot to control a wide variety of simulation systems. In this particular case we're controlling an aircraft in X-Plane 10. And just for demonstration purposes we're using the 747-400 which does offer some interesting tuning challenges for Arduipilot. The mission that we're going to be doing um, is uh, taking off from Sydney Airport then flying out around this little course out here, then doing an automatic landing back at Sydney Airport. So, um, we're just about ready to go. So first of all, we need to arm the 747. So we will arm it now. So we're now armed and we are ready for takeoff. So um, what we're going to do is just tell it to go into auto mode and it'll do the first waypoint, which is a takeoff. After that, it'll head out to this waypoint up here, which is in the middle of Sydney. Uh, so let's do the takeoff. There it is. So it's now gone into auto mode, and the throttle is uh, going up, and we can see here that the airspeed is rising. The clunks you heard there when, um, when we started up were the flaps deploying. I've got uh, two flap settings set up in Arduipilot and uh, so it's set, I think it's 50% flaps that it has at the moment and the flaps are very slow to deploy however. Um, Arduipilot's used to flaps deploying quite quickly so it doesn't actually get full flaps at the start of the takeoff uh, just because they're still deploying. Alright, you can see it's now rotated. I set a rotate speed of I think about uh, 80 meters a second, so 160 knots, and uh, so it's now managed to take off. I think that was quite a reasonable takeoff, given that uh, Arduipilot's normally designed for slightly smaller aircraft. So it's now turning towards the, the second waypoint. I've set a maximum roll limit in Arduipilot of 30 degrees, um, and a maximum pitch limit of I think 15 degrees. So it's not going to do any really nasty maneuvers here and I'm hoping that uh, any passengers uh, or simulated passengers that happen to be on board don't get too upset. Um, although not all of the flights of Arduipilot controlling their 747 have gone well. Uh, one of the recent flight tests it actually managed to scrape a, uh, an engine on the ocean on its way back towards Sydney. But I'm hoping it won't do that this time. I've adjusted the, uh, the pitch and text tuning a little bit to try to reduce that. Alright, so it's now heading towards that waypoint. You can see that it's now reached a, um, an airspeed of about 120 metres per second. And that's around the cruise speed that I was aiming for, so 240 knots or so. And it's now uh, climbing up to around 400 metres. And so it's just about on the target altitude. The target altitude for that waypoint was 400 metres. It's now going to turn around and head out to the east over the ocean. And you can see the nice gentle turn. That's the Arduipilot L1 navigation controller. I needed to set the L1 period slightly higher than people would usually do with Arduipilot. I found that an L1 period of about 35 or so seemed to work reasonably and uh, gave reasonable turns, uh, coupled with the um, uh, the lower roll limit. Notice I've still got the landing gear down. Unfortunately, uh, Arduipilot doesn't have automatic control of landing gear in X-Plane. It is possible to add it, uh, but haven't done that yet. So I'm just going to hit the G key in X-Plane to tell it to retract that landing gear. It does actually fly fine with the landing gear down, but the fuel economy, I imagine, will be a little bit better if we retract the landing gear. Alright, so there we are, we're heading out over the ocean and it's going to start heading towards that next waypoint. And once it's headed to waypoint 3, it'll then head out a little bit further towards waypoint 4. 
we might as well have a look at the tuning here while we're at it. So you can see there that the navigation roll and navigation pitch, it's got it reasonably under control at the moment. You can see here it's just trying to do a bit of roll, so it's trying to level out, and it, there's quite a slow response. Um, so 747s aren't really renowned for being nimble aircraft, and so when the roll controller wants to change the attitude of the aircraft, it does take quite a long time to respond. Luckily, all of our controllers do have time constants associated with them, so I was able to raise those time constants and that got things under reasonable control. Uh, so it was actually able to, to fly an aircraft, even one as big as a, a 747. So it's now coming up to a left turn, just, just a course correction to do the cross-tracking. Uh, you'll notice that um, even though it's heading waypoint 2 straight out to waypoint 3 here, it took this enormous arc around here, which is probably 10 or 15 kilometers across, in order to get it back on track. And of course, normally when I'm dealing with you know bug reports in IG Pilot, people you know complain if their cross tracking is off by sort of five or ten meters. Um, in this case, being uh, out by less than a kilometer isn't too bad actually in a 747. But it'll get it back on course now. So it's weaving slightly. The L1 period may not be quite right there. Might have it uh, a little bit too low, causing that little bit of weaving but I think it'll give it manage to get itself back on track reasonably in uh, in a few seconds. There it comes. And it's got itself lined up. Let's see how its uh, nav roll and nav pitch are doing. Yes, so that seems to be reasonably well on track. All right, so why don't we look at how it's doing at something like the altitude error. So let's turn off the nav roll and nav pitch, and hopefully we can find the altitude error here. So we've got the target airspeed, we've got the uh, altitude error, there it is, and we should be able to get the airspeed errors up as well. So, so that tells us you know, how far we are off in our altitude and airspeed. And you can see the airspeed error is at sort of less than a metre per second or so. And the altitude error, it is a few metres off. It's about five metres off in altitude. But given the, the aircraft the size of a 747, I think it's acceptable to be a, a few metres off in, in altitude. So we'll, uh, we'll pop it back to the navigation ones, the nav roll, nav pitch, because they're usually the ones that are of most interest. So um, let's have a look at nav roll, nav pitch, and put in roll and pitch as well. All right, so now it's it's heading out towards this waypoint four. Now it's a quite a long flight out here around Sydney. It's got to sort of go right around these loops. What I might do is just let it reach waypoint four, and then shortly after that, I'll tell it to do a return to launch. And so I'll take this opportunity to show you a bit about the flight plan. So what we've got here is a do land start waypoint. What that means is that um, combined with a parameter called RTL auto land, which is set to two, um, the, uh, when we tell it to RTL, it'll actually start this submission here. It'll jump to the do land start, then it'll go waypoint nine, 10, waypoint 11. It tells it to lower its target airspeed down to 110 meters per second. So 220 knots, which is the landing approach speed that I've got set up. And finally, it's got a waypoint here at 150 meters and then a landing point. Ah, oh, the landing point isn't actually at altitude zero. I'll just fix that. It's because I'd moved one of the one of the waypoints and hadn't adjusted it for the uh, slight slope in the land. So that's fixed up that landing. So we'll land at altitude zero rather than a couple of meters underground. All right, it's just about reached that waypoint, and it has now. So it's now heading towards waypoint five. Let's see how neatly it manages to do this turn. There is a slight problem. We normally set the WP radius uh, in IG Pilot, which uh, uh, tells it how soon before a turn it's allowed to turn. But uh, in the case of a 747, you really need it to about three or four kilometers, and uh, we don't support numbers quite that large. So that's partly why it's overshooting the waypoint here a little bit. But uh, I think it's about time for us to head in for a landing. So we're just going to hit the RTL button here and head the plane back. And it, notice it, it went to waypoint 8, immediately jumped past waypoint 8. Waypoint 8 is just the do land start. It then heads, is heading towards waypoint 9. 
and while we're while we're here we might as well look at the view of the aircraft from a few other different angles so uh, there you go we'll see it doing a bit of an approach here towards Sydney and a fly past that really looks quite nice I think all right so if now it's flying off in the distance I might do the uh, the view from the front again here now we can do maybe one more fly past like that before we do the uh, the view from the front Great. So it's at an altitude of 360 meters. Um, its altitude error is 4 meters and its airspeed error is 0 0.2 meters per second. So it's really in pretty good control of the aircraft at this stage. And it looks like it's uh, on track for a good landing. You can see the various data here uh, coming in from X-Plane. I've got a few of those up here because I was using those to work out the appropriate interfaces. There were a few challenges in controlling X-Plane. Um, I wanted to be able to have joystick support so that you can fly it with a joystick attached to X-Plane. And uh, getting joystick input from X-Plane across the network uh, is reasonably easy, except for throttle. There's some very strange things with the way X-Plane deals with throttle input. And uh, so that required some fairly ugly hacks in the code, but it does work and it means that you can fly pretty much any fixed wing aircraft in X-Plane now with ArduPilot and you can use a joystick attached to your X-Plane instance to be able to fly it about, uh, which is very useful. I found it particularly useful for testing uh, some gliders. There was an interesting bug that Mark Merlin found with uh, ArduPilot not being able to write itself from an inverted attitude in um, particular sorts of gliders and uh, had a very kind contribution of somebody who created a model of the Calaris 7 glider that Mark is flying and uh, then uh, I set that up in X-Play and I was able to reproduce the problem and it's now fixed in master ready for the next release. There's a number of other models available for X-Play there's some sports aircraft and there's some flying wings and various things. Um, the the accuracy of the simulation I do find varies a little bit depending on the CPU load on your machine, which is a shame. It would be nice if uh, X-Plane had lockstep scheduling, which would uh, avoid that and ensure that the physics remained um, high fidelity even in the case of a high load on the machine, but unfortunately that isn't the case. Um, so you do have to make sure you have a fairly fast machine to get reasonable results out of X-Plane. And I have noticed that while running this video recorder to record this video that the performance has been significantly reduced. I'm only getting about uh, 20 frames a second at the moment out of X-Plane, which is really quite low. We normally run our simulations at 1200 frames per second, so uh, rather a lot faster than that. But um, 20 frames a second is enough for a fixed wing aircraft to fly it. Um, ArduPilot is doing interpolation between the frames, so although it's only getting 20 frames a second of data from X-Plane, it's interpolating it up and it's currently getting about 900 frames per second with the interpolated data. And uh, that gets it up to the sort of rate that allows the, the various subsystems of ArduPilot to be happy about the sensor data that's coming in. All right, so it's now going to start turning towards final approach, and I think it might be a reasonable time to lower the landing gear. As I mentioned before, the we don't have automatic landing gear control in X-Plane for Siddle yet, but I hope to add that sometime in the future. So I've just got to hit the G button here in, um, in X-Plane. That and the releasing of the parking brake are currently the only two things that I have to do using the uh, keyboard in X-Plane. Um, everything else is fully automated, so I haven't touched the sticks at all in this whole flight. Uh, it's been fully autonomous. You will notice a little bit of weaving there, so that purple flight track is not exactly ideal. It could have been a lot neater, um, but um, uh, really we need to be able to deal with much longer waypoint turn distances in ArduPilot to really neaten that up. But it will be able to level it, uh, level itself out, and I think it's going to line up with the runway quite reasonably here. Let's see how the tuning's going. And yes, it's converging there nicely. It's within a degree or two of what it wants to be. 
That's good. It's going to level out for the final approach. So I think for the final approach I'll show the view from behind the aircraft so that you can see it uh, as it comes in. You'll notice it'll start deploying flaps. The little red lights in there, they're the landing lights on the runway. And uh, you'll see it starting to manipulate the, the elevator and rudder and things as it lines up for the final final landing. And it'll, um, uh, it'll also deploy flaps. So far its altitude is just about on track. It's just about uh, 4 meters low at the moment. And it's off by 1 meter per second in its target airspeed. It's about to reach its final waypoint and at that point it'll deploy some flaps and it'll start slowing down. And there it is and you can see it's starting to deploy flaps and the elevator is automatically compensating for the, um, the change in control authority with the flaps deploying. You can really see how slow the flaps are to deploy. They've only come out a tiny amount here so far. But we're still on track for a good landing. Now, shall I, uh, I might show the view from, from the front as it comes in for the landing. It's just about over the runway now. Just another few metres. See the shadow on the water there? There it is, and coming into touchdown just about at the right point. And it's aiming to touch down 100 metres or so along the runway which looks like it will do quite nicely. A little bit of a hard touchdown, not quite perfect. But uh, I don't think the passengers will be screaming too much about that. Alright, it's starting to slow down. And now it's probably time to apply the brakes. I don't have control of the reverse thrusters and the, um, the other mechanisms that would normally be used in... Um, uh, in a plane like a 747, so all I can do is apply the brakes. But the plane is slowing down nicely, and you can see there the, the airspeed indicator in um, Mission Planner over here, it's down to 50 metres a second, so about 100 knots, down to below 80 knots now. Down below 50 knots. just a metre or two off the centre line uh, to the left but uh, and it's slowing down and stopped and there we are we are now landed and uh, so uh, we can now or we can just leave it it'll automatically disarm I believe I've got automatic disarm set just checking I do have that yes I've got a 20 second automatic disarm set so 20 seconds for the engines to cool down a little bit then the um, RG pilot should automatically disarm after landing there it is it's disarmed great and it's retracting the flaps all right well welcome to Sydney and uh, I hope you had a, an enjoyable flight and look forward to uh, seeing you fly um, RG pilot again in the future Good night.